Pat P. Week two will be upon us sooner than later. That opponent is an opponent that you don't like, the Steelers don't like, and they don't like y'all either. The Cleveland Browns will be coming to Pittsburgh, surprising a lot of people. Remember I talked about the narrative of the unknowns happening in the game of football, especially in the NFL. The Cleveland Browns took care of business easily against Cincinnati. I actually had I had Cleveland in the two-team parlay money line. I didn't even want points that the, the Cincinnati Bengals was given Cleveland. I had Cleveland. In Pittsburgh. So let me talk to the fans real quick and the listeners. Pat P, this has nothing to do with you. You're just a bystander. Mm-hmm. I went into Sunday's slate of ball games with about three different parlays. I had a Thursday night parlay that consisted of the Detroit Lions winning. They won. I had Atlanta in that parlay as well. Atlanta won. I had Cleveland in that parlay getting points. Cleveland won. I had the Pittsburgh Steelers in that parlay getting points. Pittsburgh lost. I had a two-team parlay consisting of Cleveland beating Cincinnati, no points, money line. Pittsburgh beating San Francisco, no points, money line. Pittsburgh lost that parlay as well. Long story short, I had three parlays all consistent of Pittsburgh because I was that confident it was going to happen. It didn't happen. It happens, right? That's what I'm talking about, the narrative. In this game right here for the Cleveland Browns, no one saw Cleveland doing what they did to the Pittsburgh, I mean, to the Cincinnati Bengals. I watched that game, Pat P. They surprised me with how well they dominated in the trenches on both sides of the football. 1-0 after beating Cincinnati 24-3. to uh, You were playing at the same time as I mentioned. You didn't get a chance to really see a lot. I watched that game thoroughly. And like I said, I was definitely surprised. It's a home game, primetime game. You know, what are your expectations? You just played in front of Pittsburgh in the, in the crowd Sunday. Clearly, it was extremely loud for about a half until things kind of got out of whack. But what are you expecting from, you know, this bounce back opportunity for you and the fans as well, hosting the Cleveland Browns, a divisional four to say the least? Um, well, obviously, I know the fans are going to be there. Um, as players, we have to make sure that we show up. <laughs> you know, we have to make sure we show up and be ready to execute yep. the game plan on this big stage and being able to get this bad taste out of our mouths. So um, my expectations, I know, I know, the, I know the stadium is going to be cra- uh, crowded. Yep. It's going to be loud. You know, I know, you know, this is, you know, Monday night football, you know what I mean? And, and being here in Pittsburgh for the last four or five months, this is a football town. No they question. Love no football. Pittsburgh Steelers. So I know they're going to show up and show out now just upon us to go out here and have a great week of preparation and go out and execute to the best of our ability to try to pull out uh, pull out a W. Well, a little, a little. I like to, like to to share some good news for you guys. B Mac will be in the building. I will be there, and I'll say this. I think I am a good luck charm because the last game I was at was was a preseason game. You guys played fairly well, mm-hmm. so I'll be there in the building Sunday. And if you guys beat the dogs the dog slop out of Cleveland, I think Mr. Rooney and crew need to find a way to make sure I'm at every ball game because I might <laughs> So our listeners and our viewers, when we do our recap with the Browns <laughs> and get ready for that Vegas game, if Pittsburgh molly walk the Cleveland Browns, I think I know – who the secret is and the good secret is. So we just got to figure it out the rest of the way. And Mr. Rooney had to talk to CBS and, and figure out what they can do to have me be in the building for every ball game because you guys potentially could go 16 and 1 if B Mac is there. Hey, okay. put it out there. Hey, folks, we find a way to work it out. Everybody be happy. I think it, it can happen. Now, this is something I didn't know, Pappy. You never played against Deshaun Watson. Nope. The last time I had an opportunity to play against him was 16, maybe 17, in Houston, yep. and he got hurt, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So you never played against Deshaun Watson? My first uh, time. Yeah, still talent, talented player. Um, did some pretty good things against uh, Cincinnati. And what I was, you know, intrigued to see, what I see a more comfortable Deshaun Watson, even though the weather was a bit difficult with the run, Rain and everything like that, but he started to really make plays with his legs when it's when it wasn't really there in the passing game, and that's another element to 
who he is as a player, you know, the dual threat ability that he has. So he made some plays. We know what he could be capable of. And, you know, he has the, you know, starting to establish a relationship with his wide receivers, Amari Cooper, South Florida guy, Donovan yeah. People Jones, Elijah Moore, another South Florida kid as well from Broward County. Uh, th- th- those are the three top wide receivers. You know, Elijah Moore is kind of like their Calvin Austin, to say the least, a joystick type player. Uh, you know, you've played against Amari Cooper before, outstanding route runner. You know, when you talk about those three guys, man, and knowing, you know, the task you guys just faced against San Francisco, you know, are there any similarities with the individuals for this week with the Cleveland Browns? Um, no, nah, not really. Not really, because you I feel like you have much more of a, a savvy receipt. I don't want people to take this out of the wrong content. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with with uh, with the Cleveland Browns receiver core, they run more routes. They run more routes out of the out of the uh, out of the uh, the, uh, the route tree. Mm-hmm. Versus San Fran, like we talked about, there are more in breaking routes, more digs, more bang gauge. Yeah. I don't know if it's easier for the quarterback to see, or that's just how, <laughs> excuse me, or that's just how the offense is structured, but. It is what it is. But with this, with this group that we're going up against Sunday, they're going to have a little bit more wiggle in their routes. They're going to have a little bit more variety of routes. You know, so we're going to have to make sure that we're on our P's and Q's for sure, because um we know at, at how good of a route runner Mari is. He can make one thing look yeah. like another, especially in the red zone. Yeah. Um uh you got uh people Jones. Who is a, a a bigger uh, uh, who's who's a shifty receiver who can take the top off the defense as well? Mm-hmm. And uh, I haven't watched much of uh, Elijah Moore. Yeah, Elijah Moore obviously been with my first year here in the uh, in in the division. So I'm actually about to get get on film here after our show, so I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about him. But those two guys are you know some some receivers um, that have the ability to run multiple routes versus just end breaking routes. Yeah. And, and one thing in regards to Cleveland, you 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 cannot have a conversation talking about the Browns offense without mentioning Nick Chubb. No question. <laughs> Nick Chubb is a grown man. He had a lot of success uh, against Cincinnati last Sunday. You guys just played against Christian McCaffrey, another big threat at the running back position. It don't get any easier with Nick Chubb coming to town. Uh, where does he fit in? Your best running backs in the league right now, man. He's top five for sure, easily. Yeah, yeah. He's top. I, I, you know, I I really hate like numbering guys because guys, so many guys are different at so many different things. Like to me, Christian and Nick Chubb are not. They they play running back, but they're not the same running back. They're different running backs. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's hard to to kind of gauge on like who's the best. If you want to say who's the best running back, you know, you got to put it in a category. Like who's the best downhill running back? Because mm-hmm. you don't see Nick Chubb ca- catching passes out of the backfield. You don't see him out there running no no slant, no hitches, no anything like that. You don't see Derrick Henry doing that. You know what I mean? So you have to kind of put these guys in uh, different categories uh, because – all these running backs have different skill sets now. Um, but he's top five for sure, easily. That's not I even – Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no he's doubt. He five. quietly dominates opposing defenses. So this yeah. is a big-time task for you guys uh, based on what you just faced uh, last week with San Francisco. Now, defensively for uh, the Cleveland Browns, they got some new faces out there, and they did a great job in just putting pressure on Joe Burrow, neutralizing their game plan. Zadarius Smith, your former teammate, Dalvin Tomlinson, both on the Browns right now. You know those guys ex- extremely well playing with them in Minnesota. You pair them up with Miles Garrett, man. You, you got some dogs in that in, in that front. What kind of forces does, you know, those guys present in regards to challenges for the Steelers offense? And you played against a pretty dominant unit on the defensive front in San Francisco uh, this past week. You know, and, and and seeing what happened against San Francisco, when you talk about playing against some guys that you know that you want to battle with, man, what type of challenges they could present to your offensive line unit and offense in totality? Man, just like we got another big running back task at hand as a, as a defense. Yep. 
you know, these the offensive line and offensive unit got another big task of a, a nice front seven waiting on them as well. You know, but <laughs> no y'all we, today, we got to smile in the face of adversity. Yeah. And accept the challenge. Yep. How are we going to respond? You know what I mean? We know that coach did everything that he was supposed to do to have us physically ready. You know, now it's upon us to go out there and put our brains with our physical, uh, with our, uh, with our, with our physicality. Yep. Go out there and execute the game plan. You know, that, that, that was just, to me, that was the biggest takeaway from that game that we watch, you yep. know, uh, uh, over the past, uh, uh, the last game we just played against the 49ers. It just, we was not doing our jobs. Point blank. Down as simple as that, man. We was not doing our job. We was not in the position that we needed to be in. So, with the uh, with with uh, with Dal uh, with Dalvin and uh, Zadarius and uh, Miles Garrett, you know, this is another great opportunity for the guys to bounce back and, and put together a stellar performance because we're going to need it. Because when we get in the playoffs, we're going to see teams like this. You know, when yep. you get deeper in, in the season, you're going to see teams like this. You know, so how? Or we go, how are we going to mount up to these guys when we see them? No doubt, no doubt. And, and the thing about that loss, it was a tough loss, but it was against an NFC opponent. This is a huge game, of course, yeah. as every game is in the National Football League, but it's against a divisional foe. And you yeah. talk about trying to get into the playoffs, you got to take care of business in the division. A year ago, with a lot of different things happening, the Pittsburgh Steelers split with every team in the division. This is a big divisional game. The Browns are already 1-0 in the division. You got Cincinnati on one in the division. This is huge right now for both teams. So this is this could have playoff implications on the line. Not saying it decides if you get in or not, but in regards to looking back in December, this is this could be huge. So that's why this is such an important game. Now it's prediction time for our listeners and our viewers. I will give a prediction every week. But before I give my prediction, I have some stats that are very, very critical and important. To all of our listeners and viewers that tuning in that like to put a little money on certain ball games. Okay, some stats on the Pittsburgh Steelers side. Get this. Pittsburgh has won 19 straight regular season home games versus the Cleveland Browns. The second longest home streak versus a single team in NFL history. Pittsburgh won 20 straight home games on Monday Night Football. The longest streak all time. That is extremely, extremely significant. So that's a bright spot. And oh, by the way, I will be in the building. So my prediction for this ball game, this is going to be one of those slow round, 12 round drug fests. Two heavyweights, tired in the eighth round, slugging it out. It's not, it's going to be one of those games. If you guys know AFC North football, especially with Pittsburgh, the under is probably going to be the play. I'm going with this ball game 16 to 12. Pittsburgh way. 16 12. Pittsburgh slow drug out type affair. Hit the under. Pittsburgh. And I own, oh, by the way, for our betters, the Cleveland Browns are giving one point right now. So it's almost basically a pick em. So that's something that you got to monitor as well. Based on how well Cleveland played and how bad, how poorly Pittsburgh played, the Steelers only getting one point. So it's basically a pickle. So, so the folks out in Vegas know something, but we all got to wait and see how it plays out with Pat P and his teammates. And is that four field goals for the Browns? Yeah, no touchdowns, all field goals. So for you fantasy owners, if you got a Cleveland Browns field goal kicker, you might be okay because I'm only they only getting field goals. Yes, Eric, that's only field goals. What was I said? The score is 16 to 12. 16 in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 